Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. Well, hi, I'm Jack Berry, and I'm standing here with Dave Smith, who is the uh, owner proprietor of uh, Black Forest and Wilderness Valley uh, golf courses in, uh, up around the Gaylord area. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it. Wilderness Valley was, was uh, designed by Al Watrous, who was uh, one of the uh, first people in the Michigan Golf Hall of Fame, a, a terrific golfer himself, longtime uh, club pro at, at Oakland Hills, uh, Ryder Cupper, and uh, Dave's, uh, Dave's ancestry goes back to the Al Watrous days and his grandfather, George Wellington Smith. Tell us a little bit about it, Dave. That's right, Jack. Well, uh, my grandfather is from Oakland County, and in the mid-60s, he acquired 5,000 acres up in Gaylord, Michigan. We we're calling Wilderness Valley. And at that time, his friend, Al Watrous, um, lent a hand in plotting out and designing the Wilderness Valley Golf Course. My grandfather really didn't know anything about golf at the time, but he knew somebody who did. <laughs> and that's how uh, Wilder Wilderness Valley became. What, was, uh, what year was that? That was in the mid-60s, about five years after he acquired the land. And then about 68, they started construction. And back in those days, it wasn't as quick as we can do it now. They were using potato pickers and, and a lot of hand labor to clear the fairways. We've got some great photos to show of that, too. Terrific. Well, for uh, some of you folks who might be kind of my age, George Wellington Smith was uh, a real estate man, and he developed Franklin the village of Franklin and had big signs on Northwestern Highway, the village that time forgot, or the town that time forgot, was a great place, and it still is. <laughs> no, it's true. We grew up there many, many summers. My grandfather left uh, Franklin Village, though, in about 1968 and moved to Gaylord full-time and developed Wilderness Valley at that time. Now, tell us a little bit about, Wil about Wilderness Valley. How, is, how does it play? Uh, I know that it's pretty popular. Well, it is, and of course, we built Black Forest adjacent to Wilderness Valley, thinking well, it might overshadow Wilderness Valley, but Wilderness Valley has a very loyal customer base, including our seasonal members that have the option of playing Black Forest every day or Wilderness Valley, and they choose Wilderness Valley maybe 8 out of 10 if you're going to play every day of the week. It has a great following. Well, uh, one of the fellows in my golf league, uh, he is a big fan of Wilderness Valley. Glad to hear that. You know, it's user-friendly, nice big greens, no surprises, uh, you, and it's uh, minimal rough, and it's a nice, enjoyable walk in the park. Nowadays, uh, there are very few golf courses that are easy to walk, and Wilderness Valley is still one of those. That, uh, that is highly unusual. And then you'll have another golf course there with a somewhat... Uh, famous uh, designer. Tell us a little bit about that one. That's true. In fact, back in the, uh, back in the late uh, 80s, we, I loved Wilderness Valley, but it's a very user-friendly course. So when I met Tom Doak uh, through some various channels I'll tell you about, um, we talked about a course that wasn't going to be a walk in the park necessarily. We wanted a knock your socks off course that would be nationally acclaimed to, to complement our other course, and Tom accomplished that goal, as we know. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> now, has Tom uh, come back and done any work there? You know, he hasn't done any work. We play golf about once a year on the course, and um, he basically analyzes how I'm running things and gives me some advice. And um, we've, we've talked about a few tweaks here and there, and since he's going to be in town this summer, we are still in the talking phase of maybe doing some tweaks that he's wanted to do for the last couple of years, but it's been too busy. Now, have you uh, helped him out uh, down at that stream song? I know that you were down there, and there's another one of his award-winning courses. I didn't help him out, but I sure enjoyed being down there. You don't know you're in Florida. I think you think you're on the uh, coast of uh, Scotland in that, on that course. It's terrific. Well, funny, it's, it's near uh, Lakeland, which is the Tigers' uh, training ground, has been for, uh, seems, seems like a century or so, and they had Robert Trent Jones' course there at Lakeland that everybody used to play. I imagine that uh, they're playing stream song. True. We have a, actually a group of Michigan golfers that are, are going to have a, uh, a, a men's trip there next winter. It's one of those places where you go and you don't leave the premises. You stay there for two or three days and just play your hard out on those wonderful golf courses or catch a Tigers game maybe at Lakeland. 
Now, when did you first get up to Gaylord? When did your grandfather get you up there? Well, Wilderness Valley opened in 1971, and my grandfather was running that. And I had just finished college in 1975, and I think my grandfather needed a little help. He had 5,000 <laughs> acres to worry about. He really loved the real estate aspect of it, not so much the didn't know what he was managing with the golf. So I came along in 1979 and managed the golf course. For, uh, what was your uh, background in golf? Well, nothing, nothing formal, certainly. I grew up at Orchard Lake Country Club and uh, just loved golf and uh, had an opportunity to go up north instead of working in downtown Detroit at the time. And so I said, I'll take it and moved up to Gaylord uh, for the summers and haven't left since. That was a good move. <laughs> <laughs> in retrospect, yes, it was. Well, you were in, uh, in the early years of the uh, Gaylord Golf Mecca? Certainly, there were a few courses. Uh, I don't recall all of them right now, but we, we, we had a little consortium of uh, four or five courses back, what, 25 years ago, 26 years ago, and formed this little marketing um, committee and decided to market Gaylord as a destination. And it's amazing, we've been very successful, haven't we? What kind of traffic do you get? Do you get from out of state, out of Michigan, or is it mainly Michigan? Well, Gaylord, of course, is marketing now in, in uh, Canada, Toronto, Canada, uh, London, Ontario, Indiana, Chicago. Without lodging, we are primarily uh, focused on southeastern Michigan, Grand Rapids area for, for our draw. But our, certainly our partners in Gaylord are drawing from Chicago, Tennessee, Dallas this year. Now that we have a nonstop flight from Dallas to Traverse City, that's become a focus of the Gaylord uh, marketing campaign to try to get some of those 102 uh, temperature Dallas uh, players up to nice cool Gaylord.